So we know that patients with post-concussion syndromes have lots of cognitive complaints, and it actually contributes to long-term disability. Oops. And uh, this cognitive dysfunction can last for months and sometimes years after the injury, but unfortunately, uh, it, it is difficult to detect uh, abnormality in, in a large number of patients with the conventional neuropsychological methods. So in this study, we tried to evaluate uh, or we evaluated the utility of a subset of tests of everyday attention for detecting cognitive impairment in patients with post-concussion syndrome. So I'm glad that a uh, previous presenter talked about uh, tests of everyday, everyday attention a little bit, so I don't have to go into much detail. But we picked telephone search. Um, as a part of, um, which is a subset of tested, uh, tests of everyday attention. And we hypothesized that it is a sensitive measure to detect cognitive impairment in patients with PCS. We included patients uh, with PCS aged between 18 to 80 uh, with symptoms for at least three months and uh, all have cognitive complaints. Any person who had any core morbid neurological disorders such as a stroke, epilepsy, and MS was excluded. So every patient underwent a complete neurological exam and also TORCA, which I talk about in a few seconds, and also telephone search, which is a part of T. So TORCA has 27 subsets within seven cognitive domains. It includes orientation, immediate recall, delayed recall, delayed recognition, visual spatial function, working memory, attention, executive function, and language. This was validated to detect um, mild amnestic cognitive impairment. And then test of everyday attention, as uh, it was talked about, uh, it measures attention and attention switching. And we decided to pick telephone search because it actually evaluates the part of the cognitive functions that is most affected in uh, concussion. So the telephone search part of uh, this test is based on an imag uh, imaginary vacation to Philadelphia, and it has two parts. In the first part, we ask the participant to look for key symbols while they're searching for plumbers in a simulated telephone directory. And in the second part, they're supposed to find restaurants while uh, counting the strings of tones that we play to them through our iPhones or the computer in the, in the clinic. And we compare the perform performance of these patients in the single task and dual task. And we have normative data that we can compare the results. There are two measures that can be simply calculated based on these two studies, one is, uh, or two tests. One is time per target beta for accuracy. Uh, which, talks, which tells us about the amount of time that a person spent on each item when they are performing the second part of test, which is uh, doing both auditory and search tasks. And it is corrected by the proportion of tones that they counted correctly. And then we have dual task decrements that compares the first and second part of the test, which is simple task and dual task, and gives us the amount of extra time that the patient has spent on the dual task part of it. So time per target weighted for accuracy and dual task decrements were our outcome measures. 50 patients were included, and 67% of our patients were female, 62% had single concussion. Mean age for our patients were 42.8, and they had an average of 15.14 years of education. And the mean interval since their last concussion was 14.4. Four months. 24 out of 50 patients in our study um, had abnormal performance on dual task tests. In terms of their uh, demographic uh, data, they actually were not different. The normal group and abnormal group were not significantly different in terms of age, years of education, time since last concussion, and number of active symptoms. 31 of our patients had single concussion, 19 had multiple concussion. And again, uh, the demographic features of uh, them were not significantly different. The only significant difference was that 83% of um, patients with single concussion were female, while 42% of patients with multiple concussion were female. 
So we define abnormal test performance as 1.3 standard deviation below mean. Based on that, 24 out of 50 per, uh, patients performed abnormal in uh, the dual task. Only 10 pa patients performed abnormally in trail B and two in the digit reverse. We also assessed the correlation of uh, dual task with some of the um, subsets of uh, TORCA. So for the dual task decrement, there was the, the correlation with trail making test and digit span was not significant. But the time per target rated for accuracy was significantly correlated with trail B and trail B minus A. It was a weak correlation, but it was still statistically significant. So these are some graphs. Um, this one is the one that we had significant result, time per target, target weighted for accuracy and trail B. There was no significant correlation in the digit reverse. And again, trail B minus A was significantly correlated with time per target weighted for accuracy, but not dual task decrement. So in summary, um, Lots of patients with post-concussion syndrome present with uh, cognitive dysfunction. It's difficult to pick up this uh, cognitive complaint or cognitive dysfunction by the conventional neuropsychological uh, testing. And usually the conventional neuropsychological testing takes, takes a long time, but dual task testing, this part of it takes less than five minutes. And up to uh, about 50% of our patients performed abnormally in, in this test. So, we're suggesting dual task testing may be a more sensitive test to reflect some of the executive complaint in patients with PCS. What are we going to do in future? We're going to do a prospective study um, in patients with PCS and hopefully compare them with healthy controls. And also we're going to follow these patients and see if their dual task decrement improved over time to see if it is a good measure of recovery.